The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers and importers of the world's favorite cheese now brings you a triumph of cheese making. It's Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese, sliced and sealed by Kraft for your convenience. Natural Swiss Cheese is the kind with the holes. Try Kraft Natural Swiss soon. We're sure this new addition to the Kraft family of quality foods will become one of your all-time favorites. Gildersleeve is very full right now. All day he's busy at the office and his evenings are taken up with the social obligations of a popular bachelor. He was never one to burn the midnight oil as a schoolboy, but he's burning a lot now with the school principal. That's me. (laughs) Just think, Irene. You were in town two weeks before I even met you. Now I see you two or three times a week? You think we should cut it down, Throckmorton? No, neat. In fact, I'd like to make up for the two weeks I missed. <laughs> oh, I don't want you to get bored with me. Yeah, that would never happen. Right, George, there's nothing I enjoy so much as what I have right here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Roaring log fire, cozy room, soft lights, a beautiful girl, and a game of Scrabble. <laughs> When you have soft lights and a fire, there's nothing like Scrabble. Oh, there's nothing like Scrabble with soft lights and a fire. No, Irene, you know I didn't mean it that way. It just boils down to the fact that I enjoy being with you. Shall we play another game? Excuse me, Throckmorton. You bet. Who could be phoning at this hour? Say, it is 10.30. Hello? Oh, hello, Clarence. (laughs) Clarence Olson. That pushy hospital intern. (laughs) You want to come by tonight? He wouldn't dare. (laughs) It's much too late, Clarence. I... What's that? Yes, Rockmorton's here. (laughs) No, he hasn't pitched a tent on my front lawn. You call me again sometime. All right. Bye. That Olsen has his nerve calling at 10.30. He just got off duty at the hospital. Yeah? He wanted me to make him a cup of cocoa. If he comes by here, I'll send him back to the hospital. (laughs) Why, Rockmorton. Well, I'm tired of that fellow hanging around. If I hadn't been here, I'll bet you'd have had him come by. Rockmorton, if I wanted Clarence, he'd be here instead of you. Yeah, I guess you're right. (laughs) Sorry, Irene. That's all right. I rather like it when you're a wee bit jealous. Yeah, well, that means you like me best. You're a very nice man to have around. Yeah, I am? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're the dependable type. I like that. Well. <laughs> In fact, I think I'll make Dr. Olson's cocoa and let you drink it. Wonderful. You'll excuse me. I'll get it started. Yes, indeed. Jealously, you're just a big, irresistible hunk of TNT. (laughs) What a fine evening I had with Irene last night. Yeah, I'm late to the office. I'll make up for it if I can get some cooperation out of Bessie. Ew, what a secretary. Why can't she be like other secretaries and get married so I'd have to hire a new one? <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, we have a lot of work to do, Bessie. Yes, sir. Did you finish typing the letter I dictated yesterday? Uh, not quite, sir. Bessie, have you started the letter? Well, I started it. Hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What have you been doing all morning? Oh, I haven't been here all morning. I was late, too. Oh? Oh, I didn't get here until 9.15. Well, that's a half hour ago. 
What have you been doing? Mr. Gildersleeve, this is one of those days I haven't been able to collect my thoughts. One of those days. <laughs> Bessie, where's the morning paper? I put it on your desk. Yeah, thank you. When you finish the letter, bring it into my office. Yes, sir. I'll have it ready before you finish the sports page. Yes, yes. And Bessie doesn't understand that a busy executive has to keep up with what's going on in the world. Now, let's see what Dick Tracy's doing. <laughs> yeah. Why, George, Tracy's wife, Tess, looks a lot like Irene. Yeah, that gumshoe and I know what we're doing every minute. <laughs> Say, I think I'll give Irene a ring at school. She's probably still in her office. Miss Henshaw speaking. Miss Henshaw, this is the water commissioner. How's the pressure out there? <laughs> uh, hello. hello, Doc Morton. I didn't expect to hear from you so early this morning. You, well, I thought I'd call. After all, I haven't seen you since last midnight. How can you stand it? I bury myself in my work. <laughs> How about a movie Friday night? A movie Friday would be lovely. Fine, it's a date. Now I'll have to say goodbye. I have a you yeah, I won't keep you. Goodbye, Irene. Yeah, what a girl. She's always so formal over the phone. But fortunately, after 4.30, school's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, back on the job. Bessie! I'm not ready. What a secretary. Ready or not, step into my office. Yes, sir. Bessie, what have you been doing? I can't tolerate inefficiency. I don't blame you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Today, I'm not worth the paper I should be writing on. <laughs> What's come over you? Well, it's about my boyfriend. I'm upset. Oh? I found out he isn't taking me to the dance. To what dance? Well, the big Elks Club dance Friday night. You must not read the papers. You, well, I haven't had time this morning. It's a big charity affair. Look, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yes. Gay holiday season ushered in by Elks Soiree. Mr. Gildersleeve, I've never been to a soiree. Well, you're young, Bessie. I've been dreaming about this party for months. You have? Oh, yes, sir. I've worked to save the money to buy my evening gown, and now I won't get to wear it. Oh, don't you know some other nice young man who'd take you, Bessie? Do you think it's all right if I ask somebody? Well, in this day and age, certainly, under the circumstances. Will you take me, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> me? Oh, if you take me to that party, I could get my boyfriend back. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bessie, but Friday night's out of the question. If my boyfriend could see me with you, he'd be so jealous. Oh, Bessie. <laughs> you would? Because you're so, so handsome and distinguished looking. <laughs> if you think that'll be a help to you. Oh, yes, sir. And if you'll take me to that party, I'm sure my work will improve around the office. Bessie, that sold me. That you, Miss Gilkey? Yes, Bertie. You home from the office? Yeah, I believe I am. Sure you are, because I see you. <laughs> I asked you home. My boy, what does it look like? Looks like you're home. <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie. Yes, sir? Will you take my tuxedo out of the mothballs and get it in shape for me to wear Friday night? Yes, sir. Going somewhere, Uncle? Of course I'm going somewhere. Don't be so curious. Who's curious? Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to the Elks Club's dance. Hey, you gonna wear your Elks tooth with your tuxedo? No, Leroy. If I wore an Elks tooth with a tuxedo, I'd look like an idiot. If you wore two of them, you'd look like a walrus. Oh. <laughs> oh. Who are you taking, Unc? Leroy, don't ask your uncle so many questions. Thank you, Bertie. He's probably taking Miss Henshaw? No, I'm not Bertie. Miss Tuttle? No. Miss May Kelly? No. Well, that's the end of the line, Leroy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have a date with Miss Henshaw for Friday night. But I'm going to ask her to change it so I can do a favor for Bessie. Yeah? Mr. Gilsey, you taking your secretary to the dance? Yes, Bertie. Uh-oh. Boss falls for his secretary. I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I only said I was doing her a favor. 
Well, isn't that what a guy does when he marries a girl? <laughs> Look, Bessie has to go to this party to get her boyfriend back. She's worked and saved to buy her party dress. If she doesn't go, it'll be one of the big disappointments of her life. I'm just being the good Samaritan and taking it. Oh, that's real nice of you, Miss Gilchrist. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Aunt, are you going to let Miss Henshaw know you're taking Bessie? Leroy, you don't tell a girl you're changing a date with her to take out some other girl. How are you going to explain it to her? I don't have to explain it. I'll just avoid the subject. Yeah, I better phone her right now. Well, Bertie's going up to the attic and get the truck seat. Yeah, good idea, Bertie. Yeah, I'll just tell Irene it's business. After all, it is business that'll help Bessie get her mind on her work at the office. Hello? Yeah, Irene. This is Throckmorton again. Yes, Throckmorton. Yeah, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to change our date for Friday night. Oh, working late at the office again? Well, in a way. <laughs> what do you mean, in a way? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, this could easily come under the head of official business. Believe me. I believe you. Why shouldn't I? Well, no reason at all. I'll even phone you at the office Friday night. <laughs> Just to brighten your evening. You don't do that. Mm, why not? Well, I may not be at the office. But it won't mean I'm not attending to business. I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I don't mean to be checking up on you. It's perfectly all right if you want to call off our date Friday. Good. Of course, I'll want one Saturday. I'll see you Saturday, then. Don't work too hard. Yeah, I won't. I mean, I will. <laughs> Bye. You try, Irene. She, she almost caught me. What I go through for the water department. <laughs> Thank you, Bessie. You look very pretty, too, in your new dress. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's awfully nice of you to bring me. I'm having the most wonderful time. Good. And remember, Bessie, keep a sharp lookout for your boyfriend. Oh, I am. Oh, oh look, Mr. Gildersleeve, at that beautiful dress that girl has on. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, nothing, Bessie. Why, it must have cost you on a dollar. Bessie, you watch for your boyfriend and I'll watch the girls. <laughs> Shall we dance, Mr. Gildersleeve? You may as well. A one, a two, a one, two. Yeah. We might bump into your boyfriend. Oh, and if we do, he'll be so jealous, he may run right up and punch you in the nose. Bessie. <laughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have come. I was only teasing. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you dance so well. Oh, no, I don't. Yes, you do. Especially for a man your age. <laughs> no, Bessie. Uh, oh, I didn't mean you looked old. You you just looked sort of settled. Yes, yes. And I'll bet everybody here really thinks you're my tall, dark, and handsome boyfriend. And I'm going to let them think it. Yeah, Bessie, you just keep looking around for your boyfriend. Oh, I am. Uh, turn me around so I can see the other end of the room. Yeah, I never could make a left turn dancing. Yeah, I'll turn right. Oh. oh, we bumped somebody. I lost the sequence. Sorry, folks. Clumsy. Ah. Oh, Dr. Olsen. Huh? Oh, I have killed her sleeve. Rockmorton. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to see you here, either. Well, you know that office work I mentioned. Yes, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on, Clarence? I don't like to disturb a man at work. Yeah, but I really... Uh, Gildersleeve, aren't you going to introduce us? Well, uh, Miss Henshaw, this is Bessie Barstow. Miss Barstow, Dr. Olsen. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Barstow? It's always nice meeting a girlfriend of Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the evening, Miss Barstow. Oh, yes, I am. I was just telling my boyfriend here... Bessie! Ah. These aren't the people you should say that to. Rock Morton, you're interrupting Miss yeah. Barstow. Well, Bessie's my secretary. Oh, your secretary. 
she is. I'm not Bessie's boyfriend. I'm her boss. He could be both, couldn't he, Irene? It's happened before. Shall we move on, Clarence? Wait a minute, Irene. You don't understand. Oh, he's only my boyfriend until another boyfriend comes along. Bessie! <laughs> How temporary. <laughs> Come on, Clarence. Nice meeting you, Miss Barstow. It was nice meeting you. Goodbye, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Isn't he handsome? Oh, for... Oh, what'd you say his name is? His name is Olsen. My name is Mud. <laughs> Lee will be back in just a minute. How long has it been since you've had some good, pale, golden, natural Swiss cheese? Natural Swiss, that's the kind with the holes. Well, tomorrow, treat yourself to a package of Kraft natural Swiss cheese. Natural Swiss that's sliced and sealed by Kraft in convenient packages. This is very special Swiss cheese with heart of the cheese goodness all through it. You see, in the old-fashioned wheels of natural Swiss, there's a difference between the cheese at the center or heart of the wheel and the cheese at the outside edges. The cheese at the center of the wheel has finer flavor and more tender texture. But Kraft natural Swiss is special. Every bit of it has that wonderful heart of the cheese goodness. Every bit of this natural Swiss has perfect nut-sweet flavor and fine texture. And there's no rind on Kraft Natural Swiss. Kraft slices this cheese and seals it for you in airtight packages. A half pound of this good cheese with a hole to the package. Get a package of Kraft Natural Swiss tomorrow. Make some Natural Swiss and rye bread sandwiches. Or have this cheese with crackers and your favorite cold drink. Enjoy it with fruit for dessert. Whichever way you serve it, you'll be delighted with this new discovery... This fine, natural Swiss with heart of the cheese goodness all through. Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. Well, let's see what Mr. Gilsey's doing. Sometimes he's too big-hearted for his own good. For instance, now he took his secretary to a dance to make her boyfriend jealous, and the boyfriend never showed up. But Mr. Gilsey's girlfriend did. It was a rough night, Hank. Rough, my boy. You must have done a lot of dancing, Mr. Gilsey's. I noticed your shoes are all scuffed up. (laughs) Bertie, that could be because I kicked myself all the way home. (laughs) Yes, sir. I just don't know why these things happen to me. It's fate, Mr. Gilsey. That's what it is, fate. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, sir, that's what it is. Pure and simple fate. That's just what it is. Well, everything would have been all right if I'd told Irene my secretary had a little problem and I was trying to help her work it out. Oh, you're too cagey for that. Yeah. Mr. Gillespie is a victim of fate. That's what he is. He's a victim of fate. <laughs> well, I waited for Bessie's boyfriend to show up, and that would have explained everything. But he never did come to the dance. That's fate. You got no control over that. That's fate. <laughs> I never should have agreed to take Bessie in the first place. I was stupid. That's fate. <laughs> oh, Bertie. Uh oh, let's go, fate. <laughs> Hey, Uncle, I just thought of an angle. Hey, what is it, Leroy? You took Bessie to the dance, but Miss Henshaw showed up with Dr. Olson. Doesn't that make you even? Leroy, Irene had a perfect right to make another date after I called ours off. Well, don't give up, Uncle. Why don't you send her some flowers? I sent her two dozen roses, and she sent them back. Yeah? Why don't you try talking to her on the phone? I did, and she hung up. I got one more idea. What? Give up. <laughs> I think I'll stop in and have a cup of coffee with Peavy. I've thought about this thing until I have a headache. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Peavy, I'd like you a cup of coffee. Yeah, well. Yeah, I have a headache. I better have an aspirin, too. Yeah, well. Why, George, I wish I'd married years ago, like you. How's that? <laughs> well, I wouldn't feel the way I do today. <laughs> You think marriage will get rid of a headache, you've got another headache coming. What? 
A married man has a lot more to worry about, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I don't know, Phoebe. What if your girlfriend wouldn't speak to you? I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> well, all right. What if your wife wouldn't speak to you? Well, there are times when that would be a blessing. <laughs> What are you saying? I'm saying if Mrs. Peavy wouldn't talk sometimes, it would be a blessing. No? I'm thinking of the last time Mrs. Peavy went to visit her mother. She called up long distance and wouldn't get off the line. It cost me $4.92. It did? If she hadn't talked so long, it would have been a blessing. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mr. Gildersleeve, Mrs. Peavy and I have been married 35 years. We don't have anything to say to each other that's worth $4.92. <laughs> I come in here, you always give me a lift. Well, you give me your money. It's a fair exchange. <laughs> what are you down and out about today? Well, Bessie asked me to take her to the Elks Club dance to impress her boyfriend. And I broke a date with Irene to do it. You don't say. And Bessie's boyfriend didn't even show up at the dance. But guess who did? A lot of Elks out, Bessie. <laughs> Irene showed up with Dr. Olson. <laughs> your girl in a big mood. <laughs> Yeah, Olson takes a great delight in going out with my girls. Yeah, don't you? I don't have one to go out with. He has a clear field with Irene now. Hey, isn't that Dr. Olson crossing the street? Yeah, it looks like he's coming in here. I think I'll go out the back way. Well, you're taking your girl. Are you going to let him chase you out of town? Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Dr. Olson. Oh, and Gildersleeve. Hello, Olson. Say, do you spend any time at that water department, or you just float around town all day? <laughs> Now, Olson. Oh, I forgot. You do your work at night, don't you? <laughs> and with such a charming secretary. Yes, yes. I hope you enjoyed the dance last night. I know I did with Irene. <laughs> Phoebe, ask him what he wants. Very well. What can I do for you, Dr. Olson? Oh, yes. Well, I'd like a box of chocolates, Mr. Phoebe. Any preference? Uh -huh. Gildersleeve, what kind of candy do your girls like? <laughs> Olson, one of these days I'm going to cut off your water. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve usually buys a pound box of chocolate covered cherries. Now, Peavy. I'll take a five pound box of your best candy, Mr. Peavy. Mm, yeah, this is the best. You uh, want to charge it? Yes. Unless Gildersleeve wants to pay for it. It's his girl. <laughs> What an obnoxious fellow. Well, I'm not going to say anything against a man who just spent seven dollars and a half. <laughs> now he's showering Irene with candy. Mr. Gildersleeve, does Miss Henshaw understand that you were just trying to help Bessie when you took her to the dance? She wouldn't listen. Well, sometimes you have to make a woman listen. If I were you, I'd march Miss Henshaw right down to the office and make Bessie clear up things. You would? Women admire caveman tactics sometimes. Yeah, I suppose they do. Well, I'm here to tell you. No one likes to be dominated. Have you tried this at home, Phoebe? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I think I will try some caveman tactics on Irene. What have I got to lose? Yeah, she's pretty upset. I'd better be ready to stick my foot in the door. She'll slam it in my face. Oh. It's you. Yeah, Irene, I... Oh, my foot! <laughs> well, get it out of my door. <laughs> Irene, you might at least let me stick my head inside. I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> Confounded, Irene, you have to listen to me. If you won't let me come in, you're coming out. Mark Morton, let me go. No, I'm sorry to be so firm, but this is the only way I know to make you understand things. For heaven's sakes. If you're going to create a scene, come inside. Yeah, that's better. It isn't better, but the school principal can't be seen wrestling with the water commission. <laughs> Honestly, what would people think? Well, I'm not interested in what other people think. I'm interested in what you think. You really want me to tell you? No. Get your hat and coat. I'll do no such thing. Yes, you will. You're going to the office with me and let Bessie tell you what happened. I saw what happened. You broke a date with me and I catch you out with your secretary. Well, there was a reason for that. I know. She's very attractive. It... Oh. Now, Irene, you showed up with Dr. Olson. I could be upset, too. Well, at least I can depend on Clarence Olson. You can depend on me, too. 
And we're going down to my office to prove it. We are not. Irene, you'll come or I'll pick you up and carry you down there. Rock, Morton, you look so fierce. So I am fierce. <laughs> Here we go. Rock, Morton, put me down. I'm not hurting you, am I? Oh, you, 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 man. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I get you out the door. <laughs> I've never been carried across the threshold. I always thought I'd be going the other way. <laughs> You're too heavy. You'll have to walk. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come into the office, Irene. All right, all right. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Bessie. You're awfully late this morning. It's lunchtime. Bessie, I was forced to go to Miss Henshaw's and bring her here to the office. Wouldn't she pay your water bill? <laughs> I'm paid up, Miss Barstow. I'm fed up, too. Bessie, tell Miss Henshaw why you asked me to take you to the dance. Now, admit everything. Everything? Tell her about your boyfriend. Well, I had a boyfriend... But he had another engagement last night. Another engagement? Yes, sir. To be married. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I read about it in this morning's paper. Oh, you poor dear. It was so nice of you to take me to the dance, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, that's all right, Bessie. I'm sorry you no longer have a boyfriend. Oh, I have another boyfriend now. You have? Oh, yes. Here he is to take me to lunch. Ready, Bessie? Uh-oh. <laughs> Henshaw and Mr. Gildersleeve. Clarence. Hello. Hello there. Is that a box of candy for me? <laughs> that's not candy. That's a hot potato. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Take rye bread and natural Swiss cheese for sandwiches, add your favorite cold drink, and there's a snack. An old favorite snack with special new goodness when you use Kraft natural Swiss cheese. This good pale golden cheese with the holes has heart of the cheese goodness in every bite, and it has no rind. Kraft slices it and seals it airtight in half-pound packages. Get a package tomorrow. Enjoy this wonderful old favorite kind of cheese with a special new goodness... Kraft Natural Swiss Cheese. Well, this is Gildersleeve again. I guess a lot of our good friends who were busy baking cakes all across the country a short time ago are wondering who won the grand prize in Kraft Oil's Name the Cake Contest. So here we are. The Kraft Foods Company congratulates Mrs. Michael Y. Cuchera, 303 Nickel Street, Utica, New York. Grand prize winner. Mrs. Cuchera has won a new Ford every year for five years for naming our mystery cakes baked with Kraft Oil. Congratulations to all winners, and particularly to you, Mrs. Cuchera. See you next week. Good night, folks. The great show to see is played by Willard Waterman. It's an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Abby White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, George Keith, Gloria Holliday, and Dick LeGrand. This is a composition by Jack Deacon. This is John Houston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight. A big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of craft prepared mustard at your food store. Now play You Bet Your Life 